So let's do some calculations with mechanical energy. You may have seen these two formulas before. Kinetic energy is energy associated with movement, with motion. Kinetic energy is half times the mass times the square of the velocity. And the square of the velocity, that relationship gives some interesting results that you might not expect. Gravitational potential energy is energy associated with the position of an object. Mass times g, acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 on the Earth's surface, times h, the height you lift, you raise up. Now look caref more carefully at this formula. It's mass times acceleration, which is a weight force, times the distance moved. So that's force times distance, which is force times displacement, or it's work. So you can work out the increase in gravitational potential energy by calculating the work done getting up. Let me show you. Suppose we're on a slippery slide. Now, let's say you have a mass of, I'm going to make one up, uh, 90 kilograms. Right? And you're going to go from ground level up to the top of a slippery slide, and it might be three meters high. So let's work out how much gravitational potential energy you gained. Gravitational potential energy is mgh. Or remember, it's the force against the going up, which is the weight force, times the displacement. So 90 times 9.8 times the height of 3 metres. Not going to try and do that in my head. 90 times 9.8 times 3. 2646 joules. Energy is measured in joules. OK, so assuming no friction, how much kinetic energy will it have at the bottom? This person started with 2646 joules up here. So by the time they get to the bottom, they have no gravitational potential energy left. I'm ignoring this slight height difference here. And all of that gravitational energy got turned into kinetic energy. So at the bottom, at the bottom, the kinetic energy was. 2646 six joules. But that was half mv squared. 2646. Six. So the velocity squared is 2646 six times 2 divided by the mass, which was 90. All right, 2646. Six times 2 divided by 90, 58.8, 58.8, and if that's V squared, then V must be half, not half of that, the square root of that, square root of my answer, 7.7, 7.7 metres per second. But here's the thing. Kinetic energy goes with the square of the velocity. So what happens if I look halfway down? Halfway. Whoops. Down. See, the interesting thing is it's not going to be half of this speed because energy goes with the square of the velocity. Watch what happens. Halfway down. The potential energy is now half of this, and half of that energy has now been turned into kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy, whoops, EK, is now 1323 three joules, half of what we had before. See, the gravitational potential energy goes linear with the height. So I've lost half the, the gravitational energy. It's now become kinetic energy. So. I've got half of that kinetic energy. That's half mv squared. 1323. So v squared, like we had before, 
is going to be 1323 times 2 divided by the mass, 90. My divide line went a bit funny there, sorry about that. Let me move this over so I can see what I'm doing. 1323 times 2 divided by 90. 29.4. 29.4. So V is the square root of that, which is 5.4. So you see, we've actually got more than half. The same amount of energy went into making us go 5.4 meters per second as went into accelerating just another couple of meters per second because of that squared. So here's another example. This time we've got some friction acting. So Sarah, whose mass is 62 kilograms, sits at the top of a 2.6 meter high slippery slope. There's a frictional force of 8 newtons acting during the descent. Calculate her final speed at the bottom of the slide. Well, we can work out her gravitational potential energy at the top. Okay, her gravitational potential energy is mass times gravity times height. That was 62 times 9.8 times 2.6. I ran out of room to write my 6, which is 62 times 9.8 times 2.6, 1580, 1580 joules. When she gets to the bottom, that's been turned into kinetic energy, but some of it got lost to friction. How much got lost to friction? Well, the work done by friction is force times displacement in the direction of the force. Well, the force was 8 newtons. Oh, but I need this distance because that's how far she went against friction. To work that out, I need trigonometry. This 2.6 is my displacement, S. 2.6 is S times sine 30. So let's work that out. 2.6 is S sine 30. If you prefer, sine 30 degrees is 2.6 on S. We have to solve for S. 2.6 on sine 30. Now sine 30 is a half, so that's 5.2. 5 5.2 meters which times 8, 8 times 5.2, uh, my mistake, 0 0.2, 41.6 joules. 42 joules of work goes into friction. I started with this, so my remaining kinetic energy is 1580 minus 42, I'm rounding a bit, which is 1538 joules. And that is half mv squared, like we had last time. So v squared is 1538 times 2 divided by the mass, which is 1538 times 2 divided by 62, 49.6, and V then is the square root of that, which is pretty close to 7. Um, square root of that number, 7, yeah, close enough to 7, 7 metres per second.